posted a video last week on making this kerf maker, which is a jig to help you make perfect dados, grooves, and half laps. And I said I was making it to help me with some draws for an upcoming project. So in this video, I'm going to show how I use it to build those draws. Now don't get discouraged if you don't have one of these because it's not necessary for making these draws, it just makes your life a little bit easier. The draws that I'm going to build today are made out of plywood and it's very simple construction and joinery. The front is a rabbit, the back is a dado, and there's a groove to house the bottom. The front rabbit is going to need to be reinforced. So for these plywood draws, I'm actually using screws and I'm going to plug them up. But I've used this method before in hardwood and I reinforced it with some brass pins and I think it looks like a really cool detail. So there's many options for reinforcing it. I'm just using screws. You can use brad nails, dowels, whatever you want. Let's get started with it. The first thing to figure out is how tall you need your draws to be. So I took that measurement from my project and then ripped it to size on the table saw. Next, you need to cut the parts to their desired length. First, I trimmed up one end to make sure that it was square and then I could flip the board around and cut the rest of the pieces. At this point, I'm only making one draw front and two draw sides. We'll work on the back and the bottom later. The boards are now ready for some joinery. I'm going to start with the front piece. There's going to be two rabbits on either end. And I'm gonna use this kerf maker, which you don't have to use. You can just use some scraps and stop blocks or do some test cuts, but let me show you how I use it. To make the rabbits, I align the edge of the board with the edge of the blade, and then I take the kerf maker and flip it on its side so the screw hits against the stop. That little gap over there is the same thickness as the blade, and that gap is the same thickness as my sock material. And now when I push the piece, it will cut the perfect rabbit joint. Now that everything is all lined up, I can make my first cut. Then I could take the jig away and just make a bunch of passes to clear out the rest of the waist. Now let's see how that fits. And I'd say that's pretty good. The sides of the draw are now perfectly flush with the sides of the front. Only problem, I don't have a flat bottom blade. So there are little ridges left over on the blade from the alternating tooth pattern. So I take this router plane and just clean up the bottom of the joint a little bit to get those little ridges out. And now the bottom is completely flat and smooth. The joinery for the front of the draw is now complete. It's time to work on these side pieces. I'm going to put one dado in each of the side pieces. These dados are going to hold the draw back in place. I'm using the kerf maker again to make this joint. Once again, you do not need to have this tool. There are other ways to accomplish the same results. So I line up my cut on the blade, lock it down, make my first cut, and then I take the kerf maker and flip it around so that the screw is against the scrap. Then I make my second cut, and then I could just clear out the waste in between those two cuts to make a perfect dado joint. Now let's see how that fits. Perfect, it clicks right into place without too much force and it doesn't fall out when you let go of it. But once again, I don't have a flat bottom blade so I cleaned up that joint again. I just really love using this router plane. It's a really satisfying tool to use. The last bit of joinery to cut is the groove that's going to house the draw bottom. I reset my kerf maker so that it was the thickness of the quarter inch material I was using for the draw bottom. And then I set up a stop lock on the side of my fence so that I could run my pieces along and create that groove. This groove goes on all three parts that we were just working on, the front and the two sides. After cutting the initial groove on all three of the parts, I could then take the kerf maker, switch it over to the side that has the screw, and then adjust the fence a little bit to make the second cut. It doesn't matter which edge you put the groove on for the front piece, but the side pieces, they need to be opposite of each other. One of them needs the dado at the front and one of them needs the dado at the back. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Time for the test, let's see if it fits. So now that quarter inch piece of plywood fits perfectly into that groove and it does not slip out when I hold it upside down. At this point, this is what your pieces should look like. You should have one front with two rabbits and a groove and you should have two sides with a groove and dados and they should be opposites of each other. So when you were putting them through the table saw, one dado was at the front and one dado was at the back. Next, I cut the draw back. I want to be able to slide the draw bottom into place after the draw is assembled, so I measure from the top of the groove to the top of the draw, and that's how tall you want the back to be. Or you could just take one of your side pieces and adjust your table saw to that measurement from the top of the groove, and then you could just rip a piece of plywood to that measurement and then cut it to length. 
To figure out what length you need to cut the drawback, you can add and subtract a bunch of numbers to figure that out. But I, I try to avoid math every chance that I get. So I take the pieces and I flip them so that the dado is against the front of the draw and make sure that it's square. Then I can take a tape measure and measure from a dado to dado. And then you have your perfect measurement without doing any math. After cutting the back to size, you could do a dry fit to see if you cut it to the right length. And if the front and the back are the same measurement, then you're good to go. The last piece to cut is the bottom. You could also do a bunch of math and figure out this width, or you can just line up a ruler from groove to groove and you have your perfect width to cut at the table saw. But I wouldn't cut it to the exact width of the groove to groove, but I would do it like an eighth or like a 16th smaller so that it's easier to slide it in after it's all assembled and it doesn't get caught up on anything. So then I need to cut it to final length and I put it into the draw and then I take a pencil and just mark it at the back. Again, avoiding math, easy as that. I was actually making three draws throughout this whole video, so now I cut all three of them on the same time at my crosscut sled and it was time to assemble everything. I'll be using glue and screws to reinforce the rabbit. At the front, you can use whatever type of reinforcement you want. I decided to use these corner clamps to try to make this glue up go a little bit smoother and they worked out pretty well, but you don't need to use them. You, if you just clamp up the whole draw and make sure that it's square as you're clamping, then I think that would be totally fine. I just really wanted to test these out. So I would clamp one corner into place. I pre-drilled the holes on the sides of the draw and then I screwed it into place. And then I just repeated the process to the other side of the draw front. I put the side into the rabbit, I clamped it up and then I pre-drilled holes and screwed it into place again. At this point in the glue up without thinking, I temporarily put that back piece into place without putting any glue on it. So I think I should have put glue into those dados so that I can glue up that back piece in this step instead of having an additional step of gluing on the back afterwards. I also needed to add these additional clamps that ran along the whole side of the draw that pulled the side of the draw into the rabbit really tightly as I was screwing it in. And now I put glue in the dados to put the back in. I should have done this before. I just made sure when setting it into place that it wasn't covering the groove so that I could still slide the bottom into place. I put some clamps on that back piece and I made sure that everything was square before setting it off to dry. After it's set up a little bit, I just triple checked that everything was square and everything was looking really good. So it was time to put in the bottom. I slid the bottom into place and I just put glue on the front before putting it into its final position. If you find that your draw bottom is a little bit loose, you can use some hot glue around the bottom edge to just tighten that up. And then I used a brad nailer into the draw back to completely secure it into place. And the draw is finished complete and square and I'm really happy with how these came out. I think that these draws are really strong and I think they're really going to last. If you notice, I did not reinforce the dado in the back. I'm not sure if it really needs to be reinforced. I think that there is enough holding power in that dado that it's not going to come out. Most of the force really comes from the front of the draw people pulling at the front. I might reinforce it because I know my kids and I know how they are, so I actually might reinforce it, but I'm really not sure if it's necessary. Um, so there you have it. Now I have to go finish these up. I'm gonna plug up these holes and paint them and finish up the rest of the project. Thank you for watching. I will see you when it's finished.